Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to the first video of 2020, which is going to be a painting and weathering video of Tacom's M3 Lee Early. So this is just going to be focusing on the painting and weathering of this model. So I've already pre-primed the model using some Tamiya Surface Primer, and I'm going to start adding a pre-shade to our model, and we're going to be taking some Vallejo Mod Layer Air Force Olive Drab, and I'm also going to mix a little bit of tire black into it to create this very black green color. I'm just going to start slowly building this up along some of the panel lines and our other recessed details on our M3 Lee here. So I'm keeping our paint nice and thin. About the pressure on our airbrush is about 12 to 15 psi, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. And I'm using 0.3 needle on my Hardin Steenbeck Evolution. So this is an interesting point on doing the bogies. I do spend a bit of time pre-shading these just to ensure that none of the primer can show through. There's something worse when you finish your model or you're coming into bogies to the model and there's a primer still showing through. So I just tend to kind of spray this from a few various different angles. One to add a bit of shade and also to act as an insurance policy to ensure that we don't miss any areas when we come to paint the olive drab on our model. So now moving on to the drive sprockets, tracks and idlers, again moving to using our, our pre-shade colour. This time I've just added a little bit more tire black into our mixture, just to make it a bit darker. And just like with the bogies, I'm going to be kind of careful just to make sure I don't miss any grey areas, just to ensure that none of that grey primer will show through later on. So now I'm going to prime our tracks just using our straight up tire black from Model Air. And nothing too complicated here, just going to blast it on. Again, just trying to ensure I get a nice even coat. I put about two coats on just to uh, ensure that none of the primer is showing through. So the tracks are interesting on the M3 uh, family from Tacom as they are Lincoln length and they don't fully fit as the instructions would have you build them. So I did have to kind of pull some of the tracks somewhat apart so the spacing between the tracks around the idler and the sprockets are pulled apart a little bit wider than they should be just to ensure everything uh, fits together but once you kind of do a bit of test fitting it will fit together quite well. So 
So now we're moving on to the olive drab base. And for that, I'm going to use Model Air US Olive Drab or US Air Force Olive Drab, should I say? Now this is my version of doing it. It's not entirely 100% correct the actual shade of olive drab. A very accurate shade is actually just to use Vallejo's olive drab straight out of the bottle as a base color, but it's just a bit too dark for me. However, I just find this is it's very close to the original color, but light enough to be a little bit more visually interesting in scale, which is more important for me as. So now you can see me again, I've thinned this uh, paint down with a little bit of flow improver and I'm not trying to completely undo the pre-shade. Uh, I'm slowly working from the center of the, the area that we've left in primer and I'm going to work my way out and I'm going to leave the edges of the pre-shade showing true. Now that was the plan. Unfortunately I happened to build this model in late November and into December which was an immensely wet period here in the west of Ireland. And Flejo paints, just like any other paints really, but especially Flejo colours, do not like operating in wet conditions. And my workshop was immensely damp during this period. So a lot of times the paint wouldn't, wouldn't even dry on the model or even begin to create tide marks as it pooled and ran down the model. So I'm going to lose a lot of the pre-shade as I have to come in and do corrective work. So just something to bear in mind, if you're, if you're going to be working say in a shed or a workshop that doesn't have um, good climate control, be very careful and be very aware that Flejo colours do not do well in very damp conditions. To be fair, most acrylic colours don't. Then moving on to the turret, exactly the same procedure here, just slowly building up our nice and thin layer of US Air Force olive drab, leaving that darker green black mixture along the edges of the colour. And by keeping it very thin, we can just keep coming back and slowly filling in the dark areas, but we'll still show a slight element of shadow coming through. It's really up to yourself how much you want to leave on it. You can literally undo all of it if you wish by just building up the layers until that disappears entirely. But I at least intentionally started off with kind of wanting to keep some of that shadow um, at least somewhat visible showing through the paint. And it would have if I just happened to do this in a um, later in the year when it wasn't as wet outside and the painting go ballistic. So now with our base coat allowed to dry, we're going to start working on our first highlight layers. And for this, we're going to take our US Air Force Olive Drab and we're going to mix a little bit of yellow ochre into our mixture. Just a drop or two, just to lighten up ever so slightly. Again, you can regulate how intense you want this highlight to go by just slowly adding the Olive Drab into your mixture. So it's just, I'm just basically put about maybe three or four drops of Olive Drab into the mix um, of US Air Force Olive Drab and then put a few drops of Flow Improver in. 
and I kind of don't want to go too crazy with, with um, the highlighting of this machine as this is meant to be one of the training vehicles that the US armored uh, elements were using before they deployed into Europe or North Africa so it's not going to be too heavily worn or battered so just a simple highlight uh, I found would do the job and I'm really focusing the highlight color kind of into the center of panels I'm also kind of keeping the airbrush motion for the most part into lateral movements I find it just does a handier job rather than you try to kind of squiggle it in so again going back and forth just to build up this highlight layer So with our highlight layer allowed to dry, now we're going to seal it all with a coat of Flejo Premium Gloss Varnish. So we're going to lay down this layer to protect our base layers and our highlight layer for the oil weathering that we're about to begin. So I find with the Flejo varnishes, especially their varnishes, they particularly like being airbrushed at high pressure. So I have this about set about 45 psi, it's very high, and I'm just doing short blasts on the model. I just find that the uh, best results tend to go down with, with a high PSI. Again, just being very careful not to flood the surface of the model with varnish here, it's very easy to do it. So especially at a very high PSI, so I'm keeping the airbrush moving and I'm keeping the model moving. And if you look carefully, you can even see some of these pooling and tide marks from the paint that would not really set correctly in the very damp conditions. So now moving on to my favorite part of all our builds is our oil filters. And we're gonna start off first by taking some 502 octylong paints and we're gonna start making some very simple oil filters. So I'm just going to take some random colors. This is actually from their color modulation set. So I'm going to take some colors like magenta, dark blue, light blue, a bit of olive green, a little bit of yellow and yellow ochre. And I'm going to uh, basically make some very thinned down filters. This is about maybe 80% thinner to about, or 20% paint. You can make a really, you can make a really, 90 to 80 percent tenor and then uh, the paint ratio should be very very light just a tint that we're trying to create here So 
we're going to pick a color here we're going to take some yellow and i'm just going to basically remove most of that tint onto a piece of paper and i'm going to start painting these various different tint colors onto the various different panels of our m3 here and because again it's a riveted design there's lots of flat um, panels that build up this tank so it's very easy to pick each panel for different colors so you can hear i'm just going to add some of the magenta here to the driver's armored plate here then i'm going to pick another random plate and paint that in with magenta now i use a little bit too much color here so i just remove um, the excess from my brush and blend it in and what this is going to do is it's just going to create very subtle paint variations of the panels without removing the commonality of color so it's all olive drab but now it's just a slightly different tint so Now I'm just going to protect this again, I'm going to come in and gloss coat the model all, all over again. So I tend to use a lot of furniture in my build, some modelers don't, this is just my way of doing it. So once I'm happy with uh, one layer, I'll come in, I'll gloss over to protect it. So now we're moving on to the decals, and for this we're going to use Microsoft and Microset. So the decals will become the biggest pain in the arse on this model. I would never really built any Tacom models before, and the first thing off the bat was the decal carrier film or decal carrier film was immensely thick. And this is not good, so this is going to give me a lot of problem. I'm going to get a lot of silvering. I also think that perhaps the fact that a lot of the preceding layers of paint and varnish hadn't fully dried because of the damp conditions may have also created um, a reaction here. So I'm just going to paint some micro set onto our surface of our model here and I'm just going to slide off our decals or decals. I always get People always give out to me for how I say decal or decal. I say decal, everyone else calls it decal. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. People are so pedantic that they think, oh, you don't say it the right way, therefore I have to correct you on it. If you understand what I mean, then save your breath or save your type, should I say, and don't bother because I don't give a shite. Anyway, that little rant out of the way, let's keep working here. So I'm going to keep adding layers of Microsoft set onto this just to try to evaporate some of the carrier film, and it isn't going to work. Uh, you can see here how thick our carrier film is and I was getting a bit nervous and you can also see again a, a lot of the varnish dried in places and didn't fully dry in others and it was something I could do I was hitting it with as much bloody hair dryers as I could to try to get it to dry I'd leave it overnight and come back to it and then the damp would reactivate it so it's just again I was using the wrong paint for the wrong environment but I, I like using the Flejo colors for my olive drab because they're the best ones I find for myself um, and I'm stubborn and that didn't help so I'm going to come in with a bit of microsol and this is designed as a decal or decal a softener and that's going to basically try to knock back some of this carrier film and I'm going to give up now I'm going to move back onto the dot filters with our oils so I've already brushed a layer of varnish over the decals to protect them at this point off camera and I'm just going to take some random oil colors. And I'm going to basically begin by preparing the surface of our tank here, of our M3, just with a little bit of white spirit. And I'm just going to start dabbing some different colors of oils onto our vertical surfaces here. Yeah. 
you don't have to use all the colors and you also you, you can use really any color you want i tend to like using ochres and whites on my olive drab vehicles And I'm just going to take a fresh brush here, which is a, a white bristled soft br brush here. And it's going to start pulling these dots in one direction. And you can see, as I keep pulling them in a single direction, they begin to get more and more blended. So they become more and more subtle and soft. And that's exactly what we want. So I pull in one direction. I switch my brush to a clean brush. And I just begin to pull in a single direction. Just maintaining that flow, if you like. I'm trying to simulate you know perhaps rain streaking down the model um, elements beginning to slowly fade uh, the model surface and again i've switched uh, over to a small brush rather than using a toothpick as an applicator and i'm just going to start again just picking a few different colors the main ones i'm really using on this model are going to be white and yellow ochre i'm going to put a few different blue uh, dots and green dots in places as well Again, the colours can be totally up to you. Just kind of pick what you like and go with it. You can see there's a lot of back and forth and it's going from panel by panel. I try not to do the model all in one go. I think sometimes it's a better idea just to pick a section at a time. Apply your dots, blend it out, come back to it, see if you're happy with it. And I keep looking at them de decals or decals and it's driving me mental. Dear God, is that carrier film so thick? And I placed so many layers of gloss varnish with a paintbrush over those before I started doing the oils to try to laminate and hide that carrier and just would not work. So anyway, as I was saying, don't panic with the dots. Just keep blending them back and you'll be fine. So now moving on to our pin wash, which is probably my favorite um, oil effect. I know it's the most simple oil effect to do, but for me, it's just I really like doing because that's when the model really comes to life. So I'm just going to take some 502 Octylong Shadow Brown, really heavily tin it with some artist grade white spirit. So now I'm going to just take a clean brush and apply a small amount of white spirit into the areas I want to apply the wash just to help break the surface tension even more. And I'm just going to literally tap the brush into any of the raised or recessed details that I want to apply this uh, shadow wash into just to um, flow it in using capillary, capillary action. It doesn't have to be 100% clean, we can always go back and clean up anything we don't like uh, once it's dried for a few minutes. Oils are, again are some of the most, they're some of the most 
forgiving and um, accommodating mediums and moderate can use it. You can do anything you want with an oil paint and it won't punish you for it for the most part. And it's a very simple method. Again, I just um, add a little bit of white spirit to the surface that I want to apply the wash into just to allow it to flow a little bit better. Again, we've also applied a, a gloss there underneath it, so it's a really glassy surface. And the, this is just going to flow where we want it to go. It's also a fantastic way as well uh, for creating grime. So tanks don't always chip the way we chip them. You know, we tend to overdo um, our chipping techniques, but what they do become is far more kind of oily and greasy, just before the nature of their the fact that they're a mechanical vehicle that gets a lot of wear and tear. So we're going to start doing all of these rivets. I'm not going to make you watch all of it. But I'm going to make you watch most of it so you can suffer with me and get the full effect. So these type of um, pin washes are fantastic for making things like rivet heads pop. As well as creating little bits of grease and grime like I mentioned. Um, very simple technique but really does add a lot to your models. Now this did take a long time, this took me about two days to actually do all these different pin washes onto. But I really do enjoy the step of all my builds when I get to do the pin washes. One, it just starts popping all this detail out, makes our models look a bit lived in, a bit grimy, a bit more realistic in that manner. Again, I tend to do these effects in, um, a little bit heavier than what they would be in reality, just because I, I kind of like that style. You know, there is a little, a little bit here of artistic liberties being taken here, but again, it's just... Build your model the way you want to. So again, I'll probably get some comments in, in, in this video saying that Oh, you really should have blent back the oil it's way too much on realistic and uh, for you yes I know it is I'm doing this quite intentionally um, I really want people's eyes to be drawn to these rivets it's a very prominent feature of the M3 family and also too I just really wanted it to pop and again you know it's really that kind of debate within the hobby are we recreators of history or are we artists and I kind of fall into the artist category and argument in this discussion So now we're going to move on to some detail painting now that the uh, pin wash is finally done. So I'm just going to take some model colour German camo black brown and I'm going to start painting in the metal details of our different uh, tools here on the vehicle, such as the tanker's bar, the uh, head of the shovel. And I just tinned it down with a tiny amount of water, just a drop, just to allow this paint to flow a little bit better. So for the um, wooden tools, I'm just going to take a little bit of uh, cork brown. It's one of my favourite colours for doing tools. I slowly paint that in.
Also for this to do the backing of the um, headlights, I'm just going to take some Model Air Steel and very, very carefully paint this in. So it's going to take some washes from Citadel, which is going to be their Agrat's Earthshade, which I'm going to use for any of the wood details. It's kind of like an off brown colour. And I'm going to stipple this onto the wooden um, handles of some of the tools here, and it creates a really nice and simple wood grain effect. And then for the metal details, which is the uh, axe head, the tanker bar, tow cable, etc., I'm just going to take some Citadel Null Oil, which is kind of like a greasy, oily colour, as the name might suggest. And I'll, once again, I'll just kind of tap that into that detail. I'll also use the same colour um, to do the um, antenna support. And if you're asking what colours I use for the antenna support, I just use a bit of tire black and German camo black, uh, black brown to create that effect. So now we're going to move on to the part I hate the most of all my tank builds, regardless what subject, is painting road wheels. I absolutely hate this. For this one, I'm just going to use straight up flat black from model colour, tin it down with a little bit of water. Now I made this so much harder for myself that I forgot to, um, I should have really have left the wheels free spinning, but I actually glued them in place so the wheels can't move. Now that might say, well it's not a toy, why, why you don't glue your road wheels in place on their bogies or sprockets or whatever way you can is that you can spin them and it makes life easier to paint the entire uh, surface of the rubber road wheels so this took ages I'm gonna make you watch a little bit of it because I hated doing it and once again sharing is caring and I want you to share in my pain Again, mounting the, the bogey separately and then mounting them to, in this case, just blue tack them onto an old uh, paint pot here. It just allows me to get into this detail and makes painting makes painting them ever a bit so easy. But at the same time, I still hate doing it and it drives me mental. So, the hell with that. Let's move on to something else. So I'm going to give the uh, tracks a dry brush of model colour neutral grey. I just took an old brush, cut down the bristles and removed about maybe 90% of the paint by just um, wiping it onto a piece of paper towel. And I'm just going to really focus this onto the guide teeth of our tracks here. It's just a way that gives them a slight kind of worn metal -y finish while not going to an actual metallic colour.
when it comes to the M4 and M3 family, these um, bogies on the VSS suspension were actually like a bare metal, and they're actually immensely shiny. Uh, do some photo searches from wartime photographs, and you'll see that these are actually immensely reflective. But even that said, I do mix a little bit of metallic black into my steel mixture here, just to tone it down ever so slightly. And you could put like oily or greasy washes over this to try to knock it back. So yes, I don't tend to use um, metallics on my tracks, but for whatever reason, I will use them on my return bogies uh, or my return rollers on my bogies and the idler on the running gear. Very important step to, to say or very important point to make nonetheless is be very careful with this do not get this color anywhere you do not want it you will not be able to wipe it away without leaving some metallic residue it just uh, it's just the way Faleo does their pigments they put actual metallic um, pigment into their paint it gives it a fantastic and very vibrant metallic finish but if it gets anywhere you don't want it good luck you getting rid of it it's, it's just very difficult and it will leave like a weird sparkly finish even if you do wipe it away. I'm also going to take this mixture and just slightly edge the um, main gun barrel here. I kind of regret doing it, it's a bit too stark. Um, I also do adhere to the counterweight on the 75, again just to create a little bit of wear and tear. You'll notice I didn't do any chipping on this model whatsoever. Again, my like my logic is simple. This is a very early war vehicle, and actually, in fact, it's before America America even entered the war. I didn't really want to scratch it, and be honest, this build was fighting me so much. I kind of wanted just to get it done, and it was it was just a nice effect uh, or a nice project not to add chipping and see could I still make. A visually appealing model. So I did do a little bit of metallic wear and tear, but that was about it on those two parts. So now to do the parkerization on the M1919 30 cal machine guns. So I have a very simple method of doing this. I take some model air um, black uh, black blue and I just paint it on to the barrels. I'm going to do the same here with our coax machine gun. Again, just using our model air dark grey blue or just dark uh, dark blue. I think it's dark grey blue is the proper name for it. Again, I've been very careful just to kind of uh, not get this paint where I don't want it. So then I'm going to take some of our neutral grey, again using our, um, and give it a bit of a dry brush. And that's what creates that kind of blue um, effect that the um, US Army barrels seem to have in World War II, because they parkerized all of their uh, machine gun barrels. So painting this in a metallic color wouldn't be really accurate, to be honest, especially not in scale. So by just doing this very simple method, you do get a very realistic um, end effect. So now moving on to our final weathering step, which is going to be a dust layer. And for this, we're going to use some Panzer Aces German DAC highlight color, which is a lovely sandy color. I'm going to really heavily thin this down with Flow Improver, at least 80% Flow Improver to paint. I'm going to turn down my PSI to about 12 PSI, and I'm going to start building this up, um, this dust layer. 
Again, I always like to start in the running gear and work my way up. Those decals are really annoying me. God, I, I really wish that the decals had gone the way I wanted to. And yes, I'm using both uh, both terms interchangeably just to see will uh, I'll create, give anyone an aneurysm, but uh, hopefully not. But uh, yeah, it's just it's very disappointing that the decals really just did not work on this kit. However, it's going to be a great excuse to do a tutorial on how I do tarps to hide those uh, silvered uh, decals. It's one of, the perf one of the greatest things about creating your own tarps is that you can hide anything you don't like. And uh, we'll do a video in maybe a week or so on how I do my own tarps and return to this model to basically try to salvage those decals by hiding them. So it's a, it's a little bit of a simple way of doing dust. You can go really mad and add like different colours, but I really just wanted this build to be done. And to be fair, it was a fun build, even with the fact that the paint was fighting me for the entirety of this build. But I think I managed to get a pretty okay result, even with those uh, devil decals that decided just to destroy my build. But that can just happen. I don't know if it was totally Taycom's fault, or it was just the fact that some of the paint hadn't fully dried and I put a decal on top of that and then a silver as a result. It's, it's hard to know. There were so many things fighting me on this build, I, I can't say for certain. But I will probably be using aftermarket uh, decals for Tacom here on in. Now we're just going to add our last layer, which is going to be just sealing everything with some matte varnish. And for this, we're just going to use some of Vallejo's premium matte varnish. Again, I've set the PSI quite high to about 40. Again, same principle as the gloss varnish coats. Keep the airbrush moving. Keep the model moving and don't allow it to build up. Short blasts, keep moving and you shouldn't run into any problems. And with that, our model is finished. And I really hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. Uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, staying with me in 2019 and for all the years prior. And I really hope 2020 is going to be a great year for us all. I do have some very nice builds planned um, for 2020, including two pretty large diorama projects that I hope to uh, finish, or at least to try to get them finished. Um, they're going to be quite pretty interesting, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. So guys, thank you so much. Again, thank you for all of your support. Um, I couldn't do any of this without you. Again, big thank you to my patrons that helped make this possible. So thank you so much guys, I really hope that 2020 is going to be a good year for us all, and a good hobby year for us all. Do join me in the uh, next couple of videos, where I'm going to be doing a simple tarp tutorial on how to make your own tarps. Also, in the next couple of uh, weeks, or sorry, in the next couple of days, should I say, I'm going to be starting my Arden Panther G build, which is going to be a really fun build, and we're really looking forward to it. It'll be our first time ever knocking out a model on the channel, and modelling a battle damage or destroyed vehicle. So guys, thank you so much guys. I really hope you're going to enjoy those videos and I can't wait to start them. Thanks so much again guys. Have a happy new year and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.